Good morning everybody, back again, tidy bricks landscaping, first proper job of the year, I've uh, been a bit of a lazy swine lately, well I got arthritis in my ankle, so that's been killing me, so uh, I've just been enjoying a nice bit of time off, because it's just been so busy, I just took a month off, just to chill out, and also, I bought myself a bit of tech, I bought myself a Sabine Tech microphone, because I've always, you know, microphone bits always been a bit of a pain in the ass for me. Because uh, sometimes it works well, sometimes it don't. So yeah, new job today. We're um, Symphony, Marshalls, Buff and Court and Copper. So yeah, we've got a porcelain job. I'll spin around and show you what's appertaining. Right, so best part about this job so far is they got loads of sp space in the garage I can put my sword in there and I have plenty of room lush so we're coming down here we're peeling up all these tiles and all this lot round the corner the shed is staying the greenhouse is staying so we got to cut as tight as we can around this area so we can um, tile up to it yeah, I've got this little bit here as well. This is pretty much the widest area. So that'll go right down to the end, to the um, to that downpipe. And by here, we've got a small little wall, which we're going to retain. And we're going to build another one a little bit further down, following this edge. Just because there's a border, because all that stuff behind it's higher. And then we're going to clad it with this stuff, dry stack, um, wall in, um, harvest that stuff's called. And then we've got the um, Sawn Vasuru Golden Sand Multi Edging to go on top of the wall. That's just a sample, that's just a grey one I had separate. Right, so this one we're going to use some really nice echoes. Originally my idea was we were going to use um, slot drain. But I fed up using all this plastic stuff. So we're gonna go for some nice a nice nice bit of drain. And it's aluminium as well, so it's not gonna rust or anything. Plus the bonus with a slot drain is you can take the top off. Slot drains you can't. So yeah, it's actually cost me about 350 quid more than I thought. But I'm just going to suck it up. I'm just going to pay the difference. I'm not charging the customs anymore. I'm just going to take it off my profit. Um, yeah, so that is going to go right the way around there and round side that way as well. So, yeah, quite looking forward to using some new products. It's always a great day when Marshalls turn up with all my new stuff to play with. Morning everybody, Scott again, Tidy Bricks Landscaping. Today we're going to have a blast at Threshold Drains. I hate this part, but I'm going to show you how to do it. I've got this side over here i got to do as well. Behind me, I've got to connect up a load of those pipes behind me. And then we're going to connect up these puppies. Some nice aluminium... Um, drainage not using the um, crappy old plastic ones anymore so yeah we're gonna go for a new type and this is where all the water is gonna pour into from the drain into the hole but I gotta make the hole first I gotta connect a load of this stuff up so keep watching and I'll show you what a pain in the ass job this is so this is where we're going to start. We're going to put this echo here. That's the corner piece. So I want from the edge of the corner piece for the hole in the new drainage system to slot down into the pipe underneath me. So this is going to be the first one. So I need to take away and disassemble this lot first. There we go, I managed to chop that bit out. That was quite difficult because there wasn't any room. So what I've done here, I've smoothed off the edge of the pipe as much as I possibly could. Quite tricky to do when it's in situ. And then that bend then, I'll keep that bend to connect up to that. Right, let's do this bit first. I'm also using 
the Osma soluble lubricant rather than the old fairy liquid I'm used to. Okay, just bosh that one in. Now I've got to figure out this bit. Oh yeah, I got that one chopped ready. So there, this next bit's obviously the tricky bit. So there's a special collar to use. See these two collars here? See that one's got a ridge and that one doesn't. This is the one we're going to be using because this allows me to put that on there and to slide it over. Put this pipe next to that where it's got to be then slide it over there so it covers the both of them. Yeah, so two different types of collars, both look exactly the same, but one's got a ridge and we're not using one with a ridge, we're using that puppy. Yeah, so I just connected this up. I'm just gonna bang that over it a bit more. That's where that's gonna go. Hey, presto. So I just chopped a bit of pipe off there. Here's my connector. That's going at this height. And then that goes over the hole. Bish, bosh. Yeah, then as soon as you finish it all, fill it up with chippings. Right. That was possibly the easy one. Now I'm going to have a crack at this one. I'm going to get two in here. So this one's a bit more complicated. At the moment, this seems to work well. I just got to sort that out, excavate that a little bit more so I can get it connected onto here. This is slightly at a bit of an angle, but that is actually fine. Because that thing goes on there. The hole connects up to that. What I'm going to have to do, I'm just going to have to take a bit of this back edge off. And then it'll be nice and flat then for the um, drainage channel to fit into it. Just had this little moment of genius. The cover I put on there, stop any crap from falling in it. That was the top from there. I wonder if that was supposed to be. So don't forget as well, when you want to connect up the pipes, you need to smooth this edge off. Otherwise it'll butt up again to be much harder. So you know, what I use, I use my grinder. You can use a rath, I suppose, as you know, plumbers would have that type of stuff. But I'm not a plumber. Right, let's start doing that. So there we go, I got the little connector sorted out there. So, slidey connector, slidey connector. Move them so it comes right to the middle there. I'll put a little marker on there actually. And when I know um, it's hit that point, then I know it's centralized. Well, I must admit, ladies and gentlemen, that was a right pain in the ass. I didn't excavate enough. I. Uh, that was a struggle, but I got it in, so happy days. And this end piece now is actually a lot flatter than what it was earlier. Good stuff. So you've got the last bit of pipe in there now. This is for the ACO tucked away in the corner. So I'm going to backfill that up now with chippings, and we can move on to the next stage. So it's time to fit the, um, time to fit the nice threshold drain on here. So glad we're using this nice stuff. So what I've had to do, I've connected it up. I made a little notch out of there so the water can fly down there. This little bit by here, I'll just put a piece of plastic or so, something over the top of it so no cement falls into it. But yeah, so that's good. Got that sorted. Now um, we can start moving some uh, thresholds down there. My brother can bring some more hardcore in. So every connector now from this drain, we got one of these. So that'll go half on half off for the next one and uh, as long as you've got say 50 mil cement underneath it plonk them on lever up tap it down jobs are good yeah so i just put the little connector on there now literally pick that up put that on the top nice and flush level it up that end's got to come down a little bit because we're aiming for two courses below dpc finished height of the uh, threshold itself yeah easy enough so what i've just realized now as well put these end caps on first so i am going to lift it up and try and slide that one in all right well while i'm here let's slide it in so that pops on there that goes down 
lever across the top. Happy campers. So I come to the end piece here, which works a full one. Lush, I'm going to trim it. And this is the end piece. I just capped it off that. They do sell these end pieces, so that's brill. Right, well, while I'm here, while you're here even, let me uh, pick it up, plunk it in. And then down there, nice. That works good there. Right, well, lovely, a little bit straightening to do, a little bit to me to you. But yeah, that works a dream. So we got round that corner then. We're just coming down this way now. Uh, yeah, got my nice little 90 bend and little cut there, 190. What was lucky with this cut was, it wasn't in the middle of the grid. It was actually pretty similar to what's there already and that fits like a glove right let's show you what it fits put that there like that yeah cool happy days right level it up then start going that way so there we go that's the threshold almost done it's a little bit by the end but yeah don't worry about that yeah it's pretty cool this stuff must admit i do like it I uh, especially like these 45s. They're cool. They look nice. Otherwise, the original idea was slot drains. And I don't think slot drains have a 45 corner. So, therefore, we're using the nice stuff. So, I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to watch the rest of the video of me laying the tiles, then uh, come back. So, regarding the path we're doing, we're using Symphony buff it's porcelain and we're also using check out these puppies caught and copper my mate james dodd he's done a fair few patios with this caught and copper it looks nice a quick interval for you guys to press the like button press button now Boop. and threshold drains are in throughout the job now i've just been in today to top off the levels with some stone dust because I was a bit short and I prefer to be a bit short than have a bit too much and I don't mind actually topping it up with the stone dust because you do get a nice compact finish but one thing I've got to say though see the difference like that stone there that's the grano that's from B&Q's black stuff and the other stuff that's from Travis Travis Perkins £2.40 something a bag B and Q's, which you would think B and Q's would be cheaper. Three pound eighty a bag. So I had to ring Travis up whilst I was there. By the way, how much am I paying? So he told me two forty. Up against B and Q's, three pound eighty. You would think B and Q's would be cheaper, wouldn't you? So take note, people. Take note. Don't go to B and Q's. They might have the stuff, but go to Travis. Go to normal bills merchants because they're going to rip you off. I didn't need a great deal of that i just got um 20 bags i had 25 bags of the normal stone dust this morning just to get to my hypes my heights not hypes what the freaking hell's hypes anyway blah 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 you're gonna spin it around and i'm gonna show you what's happening regarding my levels so regarding my levels i've left this bit in here i've still got to do all that but there's no point doing that till i got a bit done behind me so i know that's the height we need to go to so i've left it there so I got that string line now, running all the way down there to the end, to the prop to the heights I need. So I've done that this morning, that's set ready to go to lay to. And here from the threshold to the concrete is exactly the height I need. So I've got, you know, 60, 70 mil across there, which is what I'm after. So there across, spot on that way spot on ready to go so oh the other thing as well um yeah i got a double border so the majority of the patio is going to be i'm going to turn it around so you can see my mush right you can see my mush now or as aussie man would say here's my face or something like that oh, he's funny aussie man isn't he? right get on with the landscaping not very aussie man so yeah see the string line there I got 110 mil 
from the threshold to the string line because we're going to have a double border. The majority of the path is all in buff. So we're going to have a double border going around, around the outside using the court and copper because the buff is pretty much that colour and the court and colour, court and, spit my words out, court and copper is pretty much around about that colour. So rather than confusing the issue, you know, having too many colours involved, we're using them too. So, threshold, um, we're going to have a 50 mil strip of the buff, then we're going to have a 50 mil strip of the court and copper, then we're going to go back into the buff, then on the opposite side of it, follow my finger, that'll be the same again. You'll have the buff in the middle, then court and copper, then buff then for the outside. So it'll... Uh, just gives it a little bit more than it. If, if you don't have a border on it, it's just <laughs> boring. Stick a border on it. Eh, that's nice, isn't it? So my other issue I had with this job, because we're only using the 600 mil tiles. We're not having a uh, multi-pack. We're just using the same tiles. Right, for this bit, I have to spin the bloody thing back round again. Right, bear with me. So, yeah, I was a bit worried about... Oh, hang on. Blah, 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 blah. Let's go by here. Let's try this bit. Right, because we're using the same size tile. See that bit? The little wall goes in there. Up against that. That's greater than that. But, there's always a but. So this line I'm following. So this part here, it's pretty much central. So at least the, at least the line Wow, going down there. Wow, coming down here. At least it's going to be central. I was a bit worried one night, flipping four o'clock in the morning. I had a flipping brain thing, thinking, "Oh, is this line going to be too much by there? And it's going to end up with a thin cut, and it's going to look crap." Well, actually, it doesn't. It's going to look just fine. Right, I'm going home now, and tomorrow we're going to start lashing them in, and I shall be using my. Grabo, which is... Oh, yeah, it's in the shed. Right, okay, bye. See you tomorrow. <laughs> so, time to rock and roll. Um, plugged my microphone in. Happy days. So you can hear my flipping Welsh accent. Do a tidy like, in it. Brr. Um, yada, yada. Right, so we're going to start down that end. So, yesterday, I set the string line up. Oop. Yesterday, I set the string line up. That goes all the way down there. Nicely, nicely sloping that way towards the house um yeah let's get cracking so usual malarkey um prime the tile up i'm using the marshall's primer so i got my first tile laid i haven't gone right to the end there because i got to put a cut around the um, rod and I. So I cut myself back 100 mil back from the level, from the border, whole tile, then I'll start here. I keep to that string line now to my left, and I gotta make sure the bubble is like touching the line. As long as it's round about touching the line, then it's gotta fall then from right to left. Or is it left to right? No, right to left. Duh. So I started using one of these. This is perfect. This type of thing would be handy for you DIYers. Because when you're trying to level the bed, if you've got something which is almost as big as what you're trying to level, that should actually help you out. Yeah, so what you're aiming for every time you want to lay a slab, you want to try to get it as level as possible. And I'm using that float. This will help me get the levels I'm actually after and when you think you've got what you're after then give it the wiggle wiggle which I'll do now so what the wiggle's actually doing it's just raising it up slightly where the cement's coming a bit higher and I'll allow you to tap it down a little bit easier be like a sponge effect so, uh, yeah, you'll have to watch me on the time-lapse of that one. So I can't film and do it at the same time. Bloody string line just snapped. Ooh. Friggin' hate it when that happens. 
faffing about, faffing about, right. Let's loosen that end up. Tie the knots, put it back on. Don't snap again, because that'll really piss me off. So there we go. Hope you like the rave music. Oops, 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 oops. I can't go raving anymore. Get it. I got bloody arthritis in my ankle, didn't I? It'd be crap if you just stood there like that. No good if you can't dance. Bollocks to that. Right. Let's get back to the patio. Yeah, good, good stuff. Got a fair bit in there today. Um, levels and everything's worked out really well, so that's good. It's got a nice fall to the um to the thresholds um well i'll tell you what i really like is that gap over there full tiles same size border as that side no cutting sweet if you can't put if you don't have to put cuts in don't put cuts in if you can make it work full tiles great complete fluke that it made full tiles but i'm happy it's working with me so that's a good sign so yeah so we got in today and tomorrow gotta to do this bit behind me and in between the greenhouse and the um, shed by there so i need all this area here they all have to be cuts they all have to be cuts so i didn't bother with my saw today because i'm just putting in whole ones i'll set the saw up in the morning and stick some cuts in over there especially that back edge that needs that needs some cuts to go in there a couple of bits behind me need it for all that stuff there if i can get all these cuts and stuff done tomorrow and end up by the gate lush i will be happy with that so peace oh screen's got all weird see you in the morning bye well today's been a bit of a slow day it's always slow doing cuts. I got cuts down the end. I got a load of cuts around the side. All this area here around the side of there's cuts. Can't do any more because my Zoe's playing up. Oh, I only stuck a new blade on it this morning as well. But um, yeah, it needs a service. So I got to drive up to Appleby which is Yorkshire-ish area, four hours. I gotta take it up and get a service on it tomorrow. 
So I'm most likely going to be driving up there tonight so I can get it to the um, Tyler's Tools first thing in the morning. You can give her a service, then I can bring it back there Monday morning. Chop, chop, chop. Right, that's it. Let's get on the motorway. Let's sort out this sort out. I'm going to pop up to Tyler's Tools Stroke Aquacut. Right, let's get on the motorway. Let's get this gin journey done. <laughs> Fair play, I only rang him up yesterday to get it fixed. So what my problem was, this was a bit wobbly. It was like rocking a little bit and just couldn't cut properly. So uh, yeah, well, the current project I'm on at the moment is I got 160 linear meters double border to do. So before I even attempted that, I have to make sure this is cutting straight and true. So yeah, nice one, Tyler's Tools. Cheers for sorting that out. All right, let's go in and pay the bill. Saws in the back of the van. Let's get out of here. Let's get back to Cardiff. Let's get on the motorway. Thanks for watching, people. See you next time. Later. I remember when I first used this, put the saw on, you just go through in one cut. And I've also just realised I've got two pairs of glasses on my head. Oh well, get on with it. Look, I get ear protection. What? Can't hear you. Alright, hopefully just one blast straight through. One sound kicked in. Well, there we go. Happy days. I haven't cut a tie like that for ages. For about the last year or something, I've been going back and forth, back and forth, but now it's all straightened up and whatnot. Wow. Off with its head. Bush. Monday morning on the chop saw. So glad it's all sorted out. I've 
got the perimeter of what I'm doing behind me is 60 meters. I'm doing a double border, so that's 120 meters. Each one of these I cut is 0.6. So I chop four, so that means I need another 196 cuts. <laughs> <coughs> Why do I get myself in this mess? Because it's going to look good. That's the main thing, because it'll look good. Yeah, there's loads of chopping to do. Loads and loads. Oh, earplugs in. See you in God knows how many hours, because I got things to do. So, round two of the chopping. So, I got that lot chopped yesterday. I got another five I need to chop. And the reason I have to chop them all in advance is because each towel is slightly different. So I want to chop them all and randomise them. Otherwise, we're going to have continuous following of patterns, which you don't want to do. Well, I must admit, ladies and gentlemen, this bundle pack I bought from Tyler's Tools is so we from Monday 1.30. is an absolute beast. It's cut through these tiles so, so well. Let me just come over here and squeeze these together. Look how tight they all ended up. Really, really good. Yeah, so if you're thinking about buying a saw, definitely leading you the right direction and go to Tyler's Tools because they have really good deals and this was the best bundle I've ever bought. I have bought rubies and stuff before, but yeah, nothing compares to this, that's for sure. So yeah, go buy yourself one of these bad boys because they do make your life so much easier. That was the last cut, finally, gah, 172 of those, and 100 of the, um, of the other. Glad that's done. Right, let's clean up this mess. So finally got the wall in, just bosh that up, I've got to stick another course on it tomorrow but I've run out of builder's sand, I've only got sharp sand. So I'll put another course on top of that tomorrow but now it's time to put the border in ladies and gentlemen. Ba, 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 ba. So 172 of the court and copper and then 100 then of the buff. So yeah that took bloody ages. So. I'm going to put my straight edge on there now. I'm going to put two of them together because um, it just grabs it a little bit more. So I'm going to mark that off, chop it, and I'm going to stick that one over here in this bit. And we're going to start, we'll start there, do that bit, and we'll go along there, and then we'll have a blast down there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Get them all in. There we go, so I got my corner set out now, so that's set out. I'm not going to go down that way, I'm going to go this way. I'm going to get that bit in all around the left hand side today. And most important thing is these cotton copper tiles I'm using. Um, they're divided into eights there. There's one, two, three, four different piles. And each pile is slightly different tile to the rest. 
So what I've got to do, I've got to take one from there, 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 and randomise it. Otherwise, we'll end up with similar looking tiles. So I shall try my best to make it as random as possible. So I've actually run out of the um, Marshalls primer. So I go resort to SBR and cement. Lots of people ask me what type of ratio. Um, it's really hard to say what type of ratio it is. As long as it's pliable and you can put it on the back of the tiles, not like too hard or too wet, then it's fine. So just gauge it as you suggest you think you should or some shit like that. Well, an update on this, there was about an inch of PVA in there and I put about seven gauging trowelfuls of cement in here. And this is a type of uh, type of lucky after. It's a little bit like toothpaste. Yeah, that's a good way of saying it. You want to get it to look like toothpaste. That was a good day at the office. All those cuts have fizzled down to not a lot. So I started there, I went around here, got this corner, came around here, got to there, 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 turn back round. Oof, yeah, 272 cuts all together. Then I went down there, got to that bit. Got to that bit round there, up to there. Wow, sun's come out. It's been peeing it down all morning. We just had sleet and hail as well. Oh well, right. Tomorrow, today, we're gonna build the wall going across there. So that's ready for the dry stack walling and the Son Vesuru edging to go on top. As soon as I've done that, then I'm gonna pop down this end and I'm gonna put that edging down there and the edging down that way, the path. So that'll keep me busy for today. Wish me luck, I'm going in. <gasps>
Morning YouTubers, what's happening? Scott again, Tidy Bricks, Friday. And we're gonna do some nice easy job today. We're gonna to do some dry stack walling behind me on that thing. Um, yeah, currently working on the patio. Almost finished, almost, but not quite. So yeah, nice easy one today. Right, let me um, spin around and show you what this dry stack walling looks like. Harvest, let me show you one. Here we go. Yeah, he's quite nice, isn't he? So this is going to go up the wall like that. It's going to go up three courses, and then we've got a nice piece of stone to go on top of it all. So let me spin around and explain. Right, so one of the first things you've got to do, you've got to make sure you've got no bits old bits of cement sticking out like a little bit by there got to get rid of all that stuff because when it goes on it's only it's only adhesive so it needs to be as flat as possible and it can be messy as well so make sure you cover the floor up because if i was to get some of this um adhesive on the tiles it would be a right whore to get rid of so, yeah, I'm going to clear off the rest of this face, cover the floor up, start down that end, and then I'll show you how to do it. Right, so let me show you the stuff I've got to use to actually stick the dry stack wall in on. So we've got the Seeker Primer. All this stuff actually comes with the tile when you buy it. So the Seeker Primer I put into this plastic container there. That gets painted along the wall and gets painted on the back of the tile. Then you use the Seekerflex adhesive sealant to go on the back of that to actually stick it to the wall. So one either end, one in the middle, one in between there. So you're looking at five. Five squirts going across like that. When you're actually putting it on, don't go any further past this point here because when you squeeze it to the wall, the, um, the adhesive will mush down a little bit anyway so yeah do not hit it with a hammer just push it firmly in with your hand and that will suffice oh yeah don't forget the coffee numero uno tulio number one -io. so yeah i'm going to start over here in the corner so what i've got to do they're all pre-cut to this shape already but i've got a square i've got to cut this bit off here so it's nice and flat so we can go into the corner. So I'll chop that one first, then um, we'll install the first piece. So I got my corner marked off. So I'm just using, just use my grinder. It's got a porcelain blade on it at the moment, but should be fine. Let's introduce it to the corner. So basically, fucking bloody bastard. <laughs> oh, maybe not that one. Maybe I'll have to chop another one. So as you can see, they can be quite temperamental. When you look down at the top, the width, the middle there looks about almost a centimeter, going to about 15 mil. I have seen some of the ones in America and they're about 30 mil thick. They're really, really chunky. But yeah, these can be temperamental. That's why do not hit it with a hammer. Right, let's prime this sucker up and stick it to the wall. Right, so the tile's prepared ready. Now I just gotta get some of this and paint it on the back. Do not put it on too thick, especially with this stuff. Maybe the stuff in the States where it's thicker, it's fine. But because some of these are actually quite thin, see a little gap there? It could actually seep through to the other side if you put it on too thick. Let me spin this round and just check that hasn't seeped through. No, that's fine. But it did go through a little bit by there. So, yeah, this is where you've got to be uh, a little bit careful. Right, let's squirt some of this stuff on it. Yeah, so like when I said, only go to about there. 
is when you squeeze against the wall, it'll push to there. So start off in the middle. Oh, with help, that's pointing towards the screen, wasn't it? Right, I'll wang another one in by there. It's actually hard to do. Look for the telephone and do this. Right, I'll get another one in there on the end. And I'll stick one in the middle there. Right, okay. So that looks good. So now I've just got to pick it up and introduce it to the wall. And splat. As soon as you do that, that's pretty much it. Just push it nice and firm. Yep, happy days. Repeat, repeat, repeat. So yeah, just setting up my corner now, going round. I'll explain a little bit more what I'm doing here first. But my first issue, see the bottom part here? This stone I've just laid. If I go right into the corner, there's a little bit sticking out and it hasn't allowed me to get flush there. So what I'm going to have to do is going to take a little chunk of that out and that will allow me to push that a little bit closer that way. There we go. Chopped a little bit off the bottom of there and that's allowed that corner, the top three, to be a lot tighter. So that was the first little technical bit I had to do. Right, now I'll show you how I'm going to bond this corner. I'm not going to straight joint it. I'm going to cut the joints so they still overlap. It's more of a natural look. The top piece is crossing over. The bottom piece is coming straight through. Look in the mirror, what do you see? You see a clearer. Always tricky to get the first course in. You've got to get it nice and level, and you've got to get them mitres cut as good as possible. In the corners, it ain't too bad. You can just gotta butt them up against each other. But then, like I did over there, I had to take a little notch out the bottom so I could push the top a little bit closer. Right, so I'm gonna finish building this corner first, then I'll just do the nice easy bit. So my other tip would be we're doing this stuff. I do want to put this one on top of that one because you can possibly, you should be able to see it. See the joint here? That's in the old tile. So I do want to keep making that same pattern going all the way up there. So I'm changing over for this piece. I'll put this one on there next. Hopefully don't fall off. Now at least the joints will be a little bit more random. So you've got a joint there, so then this one would go, hang on, let me flip this thing over. So this one now, would go on top of here. Oh, I should point the camera towards what I'm doing, shouldn't I? That'll always help. So the joint now is moved from there, it was there. So if I was to continue doing that pattern, you would see this joint going all the way up there. So I'm changing over by switching the joint over there. Yeah, it's a little bit tricky, but you can see the gaps. I can see the gaps. Let me go over here. See that gap there? I don't, don't want to keep doing that gap going up in the same place. I want to shift it over. So that's what I'm doing with this bit. So tip of the day, change the bond as often as you can. So when you're selecting your corner to go in next, when you're trying to do the cross cutting like I'm doing, I can see already this one isn't going to match that well because that sticks out there. So take it off, fine, pick up another one, which we've got this one here, put that in the same place. Oops, hang on, to move the camera towards what I'm doing. Right, now that looks better than the previous one. The previous one stuck out. That'll have a bit of 
stuff on it yet so that'll bring that out flush the other one came out further so yeah you've got to be selective which which pieces you're using for your corners you can buy pre-made corners already but um oh, i find them really temperamental i prefer to do it myself so yeah be very selective on your corners do it dry first if it looks good then stick it So yeah, all looks quite nice, doesn't it? But, but there's always a but. This is one reason I don't really like this stuff, is because of this. Look at that, bloody gap. Oh, this might explain it a little bit better. So, from there to there is that much. See the bottom's flush. Look at the top piece. This tile here is actually about four mil bigger than this section, which really does screw things up. So I've got to faff about now with this bit and see if I can drop that down. But this is one of the reasons I hate this stuff. I really do. If you saw the um, um, video I put up the other day, what was it called? Uh, montage of something beautiful where I did a bespoke wall in similar stuff to this but it was actually um, Indian sandstone the edges which normally get grouted I use that for a wall and that's so much better but yeah loads more expensive but yeah this just so friggin annoying look at it see the difference in height the bottom's level and that's much bigger and that's give me a bloody gap here now pissing thing so i just pulled that bottom one off and i trimmed a bit off there hopefully it should go down a bit now right well let me show you how it went so i just trimmed a little bit off that just so i could drop it down a bit but it's a battle it really is a battle see i've still got a little bit but there but you just got to know when to give up Otherwise, every single piece is going to have to be trimmed down when it shouldn't actually have to be trimmed down. It should be perfect every time, but it's not. It drives me insane. So, last piece on the corner there, and look what I've just done. I've knocked the bloody thing over. So, there. Good reason why to cover up, because that would have been an absolute bastard to have cleaned up that. Oh, right, um, best thing for me to do that is just to pick it up and get rid of it. Right, let's prime this wall, get on with it. Like I said earlier, this stuff really pisses me off. Right, my next issue, this top one. Rocky, rocky, rocky. The tile underneath is a full tile. And that's a full tile on top of that one. I gotta trim it anyway because I got similar type joint. But bloody hell man. Look. Good there. Oh for fuck's sake! And pissing broken there. In between picking your nose and watching this video, press that like button. Bing bing bing. Just like that. Don't put your 
Looks nice, sir. You know, customer loves it. That's the main thing. For me, as a tradesman, laying it drives me pissing insane. So there's my review, a true review, because it is true. It looks good, but it's a pain in the ass. Right. Well, you'll be able to see the rest of the video for the rest of it coming soon. Until then, adios, amigos like and subscribe didn't so we done the wall in the other day now we're gonna have a crack of the manholes i think we might use the speedy technique next time you see my finger after this one of them will be done ding and bosh so i skipped a bit since the last bit of filming you would have saw would have been me around the corner there finishing off the edging well, since then, I've been doing some faffing about. Um, let me show you this end piece. This was a bit of faffing about. Oh, watch my head. Getting that corner in there with the rod in eye. That was a bit of a pain. But today, we're going to do some jointing. We're going to be using... i um, going to use a new grout today from Tyler's Tools. I'll show you what it looks like briefly. But first of all, I gotta give her a massive clean. Massive clean. So when you're cleaning, make sure you get all the stuff out of the joints. That's key number one. Make sure you got all the stuff out of the joints. So we'll crack on with that. Getting this lot clean, as you can see, it's pretty dirty. We're gonna get all this clean and then we'll set up. I will show you the new um, the new grout we're gonna be using. Hold tight, it's Going to be a belter. So the patio's nice and clean, got all the grubby bits off. Clean as a whistle. Now I just gotta make sure all the joints are empty of water. So I got my leaf blower down there. We're gonna clean all the joints out. Make sure when I put the um, put the grout in that it's not gonna be diluted. So, let's turn this puppy on. So here we go. We're gonna be using, from Tyler's Tools, the Fugapave Landscaping System. Fugapave Flex CH High Performance Hybrid Grout. So there we go. So I got myself a new trowel. Um, even bought myself a new drill yesterday because I didn't have the attachment for the drill. So I had to buy a new one. Oh well, there we go. Money well spent, no doubt. Right, well, I'm gonna cut that bag in half because I'm only gonna do half mix as I haven't used it before. I don't wanna rush it. Time to use a new product. I'm using lots of new products on this job. New drainage. New manhole type covers, new grout. It feels like a new me. Right, so I'm gonna pour that half now into there. It's 4.71 liters per bag. So I'm doing half a mix. So you're looking about 2.23.5, something like that. Right, well I got my new, my new drill, pour that in. Do it slowly, clean around the sides as you're doing it. And uh, yeah, let's see how it goes. It is always the bit where it splashes back in your head. But because I chopped the bag in half, with the less chance that's gonna happen. All right. 
Let's just have a little prod, feel, see what it feels like. Yeah, certainly glad I just done half a mix. I'll pull the rest in and stick the whisk in it. Every little morsel out. The more of this you get out now, the less of it's going to drop on the floor. And make a mess. Try Put that over there. Let's try out my new toy. Okay, so gave that a good whisk. It, um, how do I explain? Definitely a lot thicker than using the joint in slurry. It's just a little bit thicker. Not a lot, but a little. Right, well, I haven't completely read the instructions. So, like the normal grout. You leave it for a couple of minutes, then you re-whisk it. I'll just use that method for now. Testing, testing, testing. One thing I do like about it so far is I'm not getting this part of the slab dirty. The slurry grout who just gets it everywhere. This is a control type of mess. I like it. So as you can see behind me, I've been busy at it. I actually like this stuff. Cause you're down on your hands and knees. I got knee, I got knee supports, finally. It's a little bit more personal. You can actually see what you're doing a bit more than doing it from a distance with a squeegee. So that bit is good. The material itself feels good as well. It's just started to go off now. So I set my I set my timer on my phone for an hour and a half. Hour and a half just went beep. I just checked it. Yeah, it's pretty good. So we're gonna give her a good clean now. And we're gonna give her a good clean with this. There we go. So I've got myself a pedalo. So no more down on my hands and knees. And actually, normally it would have just been a pressure wash. To have actually got rid of all the crap across the top but i must admit 
that wasn't the perfect method because the following day it would all be hazy you know you have a bloody mess in it still so at least with this method now that it's gonna actually clean it off nicely so i got my i got my little squeegee brush there i've gone down the end i've given a little blast already just so i can check it all obviously you want to be going 45 degrees but i can't kind of do 45 degrees here because uh, there's not enough room to swing a cat so i'm gonna take it off normally i'm gonna take it off this way then i'm gonna go back over it then with a smaller hand squeegee and do it at a 45. actually scrap that last idea it comes with a smaller one so i'm gonna do all this area of 45 and when i get behind me when i got a bit more area then i use the big sponge right let's clean this stuff off for the first time ever Right, I'll get the majority of it off. Then I'll clean up the sponge. Just want to make sure everything looks nice first. Which the joints are looking good actually, I must admit. It's definitely so much better getting on your hands and knees doing this stuff. Even though it's a pain in the ass doing it on your hands and knees, you can you can see it closer, you know. So that's what it is. That's what it shall be. Right, so I'm going to give this a clean out now, and then we'll see what the finished product looks like. Let's go for the complete wipe off, and when I get behind me, we'll do a little bit more, have a bit more room. Right, let's go there. Nice. Nice and clean. Right, I'm going to move it now behind me. So yeah, going well. Going well. That thing is looking good. But you do have to clean it out a lot. Because it is black. And it just gets filthy. So, fair enough. So, whilst that's filling up, I'm going to go clean off all of these bits by here. Smooth them off. So it's ready to sponge off nicely. Yeah, so whilst Pedlo's doing its thing, I shall do my thing. So, how am I liking it so far? Actually... I do like it, and I especially like this bedlow. Definitely better using a pedlow. So yeah, nice one, Tyler's Tools for sorting this out for me. Yeah, I do need something like this because I got arthritis now anyway, so I can't really, uh, I don't want to get my hands and knees too much, but this definitely helps with the cleaning part of it. Um, yeah, so much easier to stand up and do it. It really is. You, you know, I used to pressure wash it. That was the ultimate easy. But I had to go back, like, flipping the following day and the day after just to bloody clean it. But this is actually getting all the haze off the surface as well. So that is a major bonus. So, yeah, get yourself a pedlo because it saves you having to bend down. Tidy. Quote, tidy. The weight of the actual squeegee from the pedalo is really nice. It's got a nice weight to it. Just one drag and it gets it all off. Let's try again. All right. Let the tool do the work, as they say. Nice. So we've had a blast of the grout. Not enough time in the day to do another batch of grout. So I'm going to put the copings on the wall. I'm going to get the copings on the wall. And then I've got a couple of little bits. I've got two and a half spare. I need another box. But it's going to take three weeks to get another box. So I'll have to come back for that bit. Um, yeah, so... Prime the underside of the coping. 
and stick it down cement. Sawn of a Suru Golden Sand Multi, these engines are. Nice bit of stone. Well, anyway, they gotta go on a wall or not on top of the barrow. Um, actually, we're gonna prime the underside and we're actually gonna prime the um, block as well. So it's only about a centimeter um, cement going on it. So you'll just give it that extra bit more sticking power. So I skipped a bit since the last bit of filming you would have saw would have been me round the corner there finishing off the edging. Well, since then, I've been doing some faffing about. Um, let me show you this end piece. This was a bit of faffing about. Oh, watch my head. Getting that corner in there with the rod in eye. That was a bit of a pain. But today, we're going to do some jointing. We're going to be using, um, going to use a new grout today from Tyler's Tools. I'll show you what it looks like briefly. But first of all, I've got to give her a massive clean. Massive clean. So when you're cleaning, make sure you get all the stuff out of the joints. That's key number one. Make sure you've got all the stuff out of the joints. So we'll crack on with that. Getting this lot clean, as you can see, it's pretty dirty. We're going to get all this clean, and then we'll set up. I will show you the new, um, the new grout we're going to be using. Hold tight. It's going to be a belter. So here we go. We're going to be using, from Tyler's Tools, the Fuga Pave Landscaping System. Fuga Pave Flex CH High Performance Hybrid Grout. So there we go. So I got myself a new trowel. Um, even bought myself a new drill yesterday because I didn't have the attachment for the drill. So I had to buy a new one. Oh well, there we go. Money well spent, no doubt. Right, well, I'm gonna cut that bag in half because I'm only gonna do half mix. As I haven't used it before, I don't wanna rush it. But today, we're gonna do some jointing. We're gonna be using I'm going to use a new grout today from Tyler's Tools. I'll show you what it looks like briefly. But first of all, I've got to give her a massive clean. Massive clean. So when you're cleaning, make sure you get all the stuff out of the joints. That's key number one. Make sure you got all the stuff out of the joints. So we'll crack on with that. Getting this lot clean, as you can see, it's pretty dirty. We're going to get all this clean and then we'll set up. I will show you the new, um, the new grout we're gonna be using. Hold tight, it's going to be a belter. So the patio's nice and clean, got all the grubby bits off. Clean as a whistle. Now I just gotta make sure all the joints are empty of water. So I got my leaf blower down there. We're gonna clean all the joints out. Make sure when I put the um, put the grout in that it's not gonna be diluted. So let's turn this puppy on. So here we go. We're gonna be using from Tyler's Tools, the Fuga Pave Landscaping System. Fuga Pave Flex CH High Performance Hybrid Grout. So there we go. So I got myself a new trowel. Um, even bought myself a new drill yesterday because I didn't have the attachment for the drill. So I had to buy a new one. Oh well, there we go. Money well spent, no doubt. Right, well, I'm going to cut that bag in half because I'm only going to do half mix. As I haven't used it before, I don't want to rush it. Time to use a new product. I'm using lots of new products on the shop. New drainage, new manal type covers, new grout. It feels like a new me. Right, so I'm going to pour that half now into there. It's 4.71 litres per bag. So I'm doing half a mix. 
So you're looking about 2.23.5, something like that. Right, well I got my new, my new drill, pull that in, do it slowly, clean around the sides as you're doing it. And uh, yeah, let's see how it goes. This is always the bit where it splashes back in your head. But because I chop the bag in half, a little less chance that's going to happen. Right. Let's just have a little prod, feel, see what it feels like. Yeah, certainly glad I just done half a mix. I'll pull the rest in and stick the whisk in it. Every little morsel out. The more of this you get out now, the less of it's going to drop on the floor. And make a mess. Right. Put that over there. Let's try out my new toy. Okay, so gave that a good whisk. It, um, how do I explain? Definitely a lot thicker than using the joint in slurry. It's just a little bit thicker. Not a lot, but a little. Right. Well, I haven't completely read the instructions. So, like the normal grout. You leave it for a couple of minutes, then you re-whisk it. I'll just use that method for now. One thing I do like about it so far is I'm not getting this part of the slab dirty. The slurry grout who just gets it everywhere. This is a control type of mess. I like it. So as you can see behind me, I've been busy at it. I actually like this stuff. Because you're down on your hands and knees. I got knee, I got knee supports, finally. It's a little bit more personal. You can actually see what you're doing a bit more than doing it from a distance with a squeegee. So that bit is good. The material itself feels good as well. It's just started to go off now. So I set my I set my timer on my phone for an hour and a half. Hour and a half just went beep. I just checked it. Yeah, it's pretty good. So we're gonna give her a good clean now. And we're gonna give her a good clean with this. There we go. So I've got myself a pedalo. So no more down on my hands and knees. And actually, normally it would have just been a pressure wash to have actually got rid of all the crap across the top. But I must admit, that wasn't the perfect method because the following day, it would all be hazy. You know, you have a bloody mess in it still. So at least with this method now, that it's gonna actually clean it off nicely. So I got my, I got my little squeegee brush there. I've gone down the end. I've given it a little blast already just so I can check it all. Obviously, you want to be going 45 degrees, but I can't kind of do 45 degrees here because uh, there's not enough room to swing a cat. So I'm going to take it off normally. I'm going to take it off this way. Then I'm going to go back over it then with a smaller hand squeegee and do it at a 45. Actually, scrap that last idea. It comes with a smaller one. So I'm going to do all this area of 45 and when I get behind me, when I've got a bit more area, then I use the big sponge. Right, 
Let's clean this stuff off for the first time ever. Right, I'll get the majority of it off. Then I'll clean up the sponge. Just want to make sure everything looks nice first. Which the joints are looking good actually, I must admit. It's definitely so much better getting on your hands and knees doing this stuff. Even though it's a pain in the ass doing it on your hands and knees, you can you can see it closer, you know. So that's what it is. That's what it shall be. Right, so I'm going to give this a clean out now, and then we'll see what the finished product looks like. Let's go for the complete wipe off. And when I get behind me, we'll do a little bit more, but a bit more room. Right, let's go there. All right, the final rinse off. Spoke too soon. Nice, nice and clean. Right, I'm gonna move it now behind me. So yeah, going well, going well. That thing is looking good, but you do have to clean it out a lot because it is black and it just gets filthy. So fair enough. So whilst that's filling up, I'm gonna go clean off all of these bits by here, smooth them off so it's ready to sponge off nicely. Yeah, so whilst Pedlo's doing its thing, I shall do my thing. Definitely better using a pedalo. So yeah, nice one, Tyler's Tools, for sorting this out for me. Yeah, I do need something like this because I got arthritis now anyway, so I can't really, uh, I don't want to get my hands and knees too much, but this definitely helps with the cleaning part of it. Um, yeah, so much easier to stand up and do it. It really is. You, you know, I used to pressure wash it. That was the ultimate easy, but I had to go back like flipping the following day and the day after just to bloody clean it. But this is actually getting all the haze off the surface as well. So that is a major bonus. So yeah, get yourself a pedlo because it saves you having to bend down. Tidy, quote, tidy. The weight of the actual squeegee from the pedalo, it's really nice. It's got a nice weight to it. Just one drag and it gets it all off. Let's try again. All right. Let the tool do the work, as they say. Nice. Morning everybody, Saturday morning, back on the job again. Gosh, job's going on for ages. Well anyway, grouting today. Did all the odds and sods yesterday. Odds and sods, bits done. Almost, forgot one. So we're going to grout. So yesterday, half a bag literally did what you can see behind me that much. So what I've got to do is that much and around the side. So if that was half a bag, we'll do a full bag. Always risky doing a full bag, but the temperatures today are good. The temperatures today is not hot or anything, it's just dry. So yeah, when I was doing that yesterday, um, by the time I'd actually finished using the grouts, it was still a bit wet anyway. So if I continue on with more grouts, then by the time I finish this lot, the first bit should be dry. That's the theory. We shall soon find out. All right, let's get whizzing with a whizzer.
not a dust cutter, not Matty's whizzer, my little drill whizzer. And well, I was close. I thought I was going to uh, overfill it. Right, let's show you the textures, just so you can guess what it feels like. Apart from it being really, really creamy. Yeah, it's quite thick. Beautiful, really beautiful. Right, so let's have another little close up. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Happy days, job done, grouting, finished. Oh, it's always a chore, but it was a different type of chore, this one, because I had that pedlo and I was using a new material. The material actually was really good. I liked it, really creamy. That was the thing I could say about it. It was really, really creamy, lush. It's always nice to work with the cream. Cream always rises to the top. Um, yeah, Pedlo, happy days, great little tool that one, just wipes it off, glides it off, just let, actually, just let it do the work, just put it on it and just drag, put it on it and drag, most satisfied, so, yeah, get yourself one of those, because they're handy, especially if you're an old, like me, right, that's it, I got my van loaded up with a load of stuff, I'm going to go see my next customer now this afternoon, drop off my saw, Oh, start a new one Monday. So, back in today, Sunday afternoon, quarter to three in the afternoon, time for me to go home. I had to come in this morning and do a little bit of cleaning, bit of uh, cleaning some of the grout off the wall by there, put a bit of cement under the dry stack wall, a couple of little odds and sods. But yeah, done. Whoosh. I limped my way all, all the way through this job. Well, hopefully you enjoyed it anyway. Um, got a new one starting Monday, 600 by 1200s, loads of them. Boom. Oh, hopefully this wind isn't muffling out this now. I'm not using that microphone anymore. Crap. The app was rubbish to actually play the video for. Blah, 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 blah. I'm going home. Hope you enjoyed the video. Like and subscribe. Later.